Okay, namaskaram and welcome to Prabandham and Stotrams. So we are going to learn the Deshika Prabandham called Adekkala Pattu. Adekkalam means Sharanagati and Pattu means 10. So that these are 10 Pasurams about Sharanagati that Swami Deshikan has rendered. They are often said to be the Tamil counterpart of Sri Nyasa Dasakam, but they're not exactly equivalent to each other. There are some concepts here in Arekala Pattu that you will not have come across in Sri Nyasa Dashakam. For example, the four different kinds of prapatti that you can do. For example, you can do it by yourself, or do you do it uh, in the presence of the Acharyan, or does the Acharyan himself do it for you, or another Bhagavata does it for you, etc. But so there, are, there is some additional information that you will come across in this Arekala Pattu, so it's worth, worth learning. And not only that, the, the concepts that you have learned in Sri Nyasa Dashakam, all of those concepts apply here. So in that sense, you almost get this for free. Without much additional effort, you will end up learning Arekala Pattu without any difficulty. And also for many of you, uh, you, are, you, you know Tamil much better than Sanskrit. And so in that sense, you will find that when you chant Arekala Pattu, the meaning comes to you more naturally than when you chant Sri Nyasa Dashakam. But in fact, I would like you to learn the meaning of the Nyasa, Nyasa Dashakam slogans as well. But uh, I'm saying that because Tamil might be your mother tongue, you'll find that the meaning comes to you more easily. But you must have gone through the, the Nyasa Dashakam uh, videos first, slides first, because all the concepts are there. So that is a prerequisite for watching this particular video about Adekala Fattin, okay? Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, uh, I've already done this in the earlier part of today, so I won't have to go through that. So normally when we chant Arekala Pattu, we will chant this one Paduttanian, which we have learned before. This is this Sanskrit Paduttanian. And there's also a Tamil Paduttanian, Tamil Tanian, which we will learn uh, today if we have the time. So let me start with this Paduttanian. You already know this. Ramanuja daya patram jnana vairagya bhushanam Srimad venkatanatharyam vande vedanta deshikam In fact, you know that this is specifically about Swami Deshikan. Uh, you will see that from the, the second line. It is also referred to as jnana vairagya bhushanam, knowledge and detachment where his bhushanams, where his abharanams, etc. So this is a salutation to Swami Deshikan. So when we chant any Deshika Prabandham, we will chant this first, and then we will chant another Tamil Tanian, and then we will start chanting the Prabandham itself. Okay, as far as Avatarikai goes, Avatarikai, you should first watch the Nyasa Dashakam Avatarikai, because that is also the Avatarikai for Adekala Pattu. So I'll only mention the few additional things that are relevant to Adekala Pattu and Swami Deshikan's uh, Tamil Prabandhams. So as you know, Swami Deshikan has written more than 100 Granthams. Granthams are literary works. And he has done them in Sanskrit, Mani Pravalam, and Tamil. So Mani Pravalam is, of course, a combination of Sanskrit and Tamil, usually. In general, it could be any uh, languages, any two languages. But usually by Mani Pravalam, this meant Sanskrit and Tamil together. And the word Deshika Prabandhams are referred to his Tamil words. For example, we say Deshika Stotrams to refer to his Sanskrit works, and then Deshika Prabandhams to refer to his Tamil works. So Swami Deshikan wrote 24 Prabandhams, and the number of Prabandhams that he wrote is also equal to the number of Divya Prabandhams that you have. For example, Tirupavai is a Divya Prabandham. Periyarvar Tirumuri is, is one of the Prabandhams. So there are 24 such Prabandhams in Divya Prabandhams, and Swami Deshikan also wrote 24 Prabandhams. And perhaps that, that it's not a coincidence that those, those are exactly the same. But unfortunately, only 19 of them have survived. And um, so in that sense, we have lost some of his Tamil works. But uh, so, so the ones that have survived include such things as Adekala Pattu, which we, have, which we are going to start learning formally today. We have already learned some of the pasrams in the context of learning Nyasa Dashakam, but we will learn them formally here. There's also, there are many, other works, Adhikara Sangraham, for example, Swami Deshikan wrote 
um, something called Rahasya Traya Saram, that the Rahasya Trayam are about the three mantras, the Thiru Mantram, Dvayam, and Sharama Slokam. So he wrote a, a treatise which is, uh, is used as a reference by all the Sri Vaishnavites. And that Rahasya Traya Saram, Adhikara Sangraham, is, is actually kind of a synopsis of that Rahasya Traya Saram. Adhikara means the Adhikarams or the chapter sections of Rahasya Traya Saram. The their synopsis, Sangraham means a synopsis. Sometimes when you look at the name of a Deshika Prabandham, you remember that Deshika Prabandhams are, are Tamil words, but if you look at the title, they sound like a, a Sanskrit word, Adhikara, Adhikara Sangraham. You would think that's a Sanskrit slogan, but it's actually a Tamil Prabandham. So don't be fooled by the name of that uh, Prabandham. So it could, uh, even if it sounds Sanskrit, it might be very well a Tamil Prabandham. So similarly, Amrita Ranjani as example, Agara Niyamam is another one. Agara Niyamam is about what kind of food you should take, what kind you should not take, how to eat, how not to eat, etc. And of course, you if you uh, go through that Agara Niyamam, you will probably stop eating because you'll find that everything that you have been doing is wrong. So, but it's still interesting to go through that. Gita Atta Sangraham. Now there's Bhagavad Gita, as you know, Bhagavad Gita, because uh, Bhagavad Ramanuja wrote a Bhashyam called uh, Gita Bhashyam. But even before uh, Bhagavad Ramanuja, Sri Aravandar, Aravandar wrote a, a Sanskrit work called Gita to Sangraham, that is the synopsis of Gita, Gita's meaning. Now, what Swami Deshikan has done is to render in Tamil the Gita to Sangraham of Sri Aravandar. So, that is this Gita to Sangraham. So, it is a Tamil composition which closely mirrors the Gita to Sangraham of Swami Aravandar. And anyway, Tiruchinnamalai is about the Kanchi Varadraja Pirmar. And uh, Meivaratham Manmiyam Man, uh, is, a, is, uh, is, is the Kshetram of Kanchi Pram. It's also known as Satya Vratham. Uh, and the Manmiyam means the glory. So Meivaratham Manmiyam simply means the glory of Kanchi Pram. Since we have had this Ati Varadar uh, in, in the news for a long time, earlier this year, you would have heard around that time that Brahma did an Ashwamedha Yagam in Kanchi Brahm. And, uh, and this, uh, then De Perar Lalan came out of the Agni Kundam of that Yagam. So you, this neighbor of the Manmiyam is really about that history, about this Brahma doing that Ashwamedha Yagam. And when he was doing that Yagam, of course, in order to do the Yagam, you need your spouse to be with you. So he sent for Saraswati Devi to, uh, to come and accompany him so that he could do the yagam. But at that time, due to some pranaya kalaham, Saraswati Devi was upset with him. So she, uh, in fact, Brahma sent his son, uh, Vasishta Rishi, to bring Saraswati. And Saraswati refused to come because she was angry with him. And, but then Brahma went ahead and did the yagam anyway with other wives like Savitri. And of course, Saraswati got very upset with that. So, so she took the form of a river. She was out to destroy this yagam in the form of uh, the, this river called Vegavati. She was going to flow through that yagam, destroy the fire of that yagam, etc. So she's in the, this fierce, fiery uh, uh, river that is coming at tremendous speed and out to destroy that yagam. And then Swami Emperman. Uh, lies in, uh, across the, the, the route, across the trajectory of that river, and thereby stops that river so that the yagam could proceed. Okay, so that, that kind of story is uh, told in this Meivaratham Anmiyam. It's really about the glory of this Kshetram called the Satyavratam. Satyavratam, the Tamil version of that is Meivaratham. Uh, it's called Satyavratam because whatever Vratams you do there, the palan for that you intend will come true. That's why it's called Satyavratam or Meivratam. And Meivratam Manmiyam is about the glory of that um, Kanchi Brahmshetram. Uh, Navamani Malay, Mummani Kovai are about the Thiruvahindra Guram Thirmal, Thiruvahindra Guram Devanayak of Thirmal. Okay? Anyway, we are not going to go through all of them. We are just going to go through this record of them. There's also a, a prabandham about Swami Deshikan composed by his Thirukumara Kumara Vardacharya. It's called the Pillayantadi. There's uh, 20 uh, asuras in it. We are not going to study that. Just as there's a Ramanuja Nutrantadi, 
there is a pillai and dadi. The Ramanuja Nutram dadi is about the glory of Bhagavat Ramanuja, but this is about the glory of Swami Deshikan. There is only 20 uh, pasurams in number, but it's a, it's a beautiful prabandham in itself. And Swami Deshikan's service to Tamar is, is, is invaluable. And I think, you know, the, the reason that Divya Prabandham is accepted on a par with the Vedas, he was one of the primary reasons for it. You know, today we use that phrase, Ubhaya Vedanta, you know, almost indiscriminately. But the, the reason that that Ubhaya Vedanta exists today is because people like uh, Swami Deshikan lobbied on, and they worked very hard to ensure that the Divya Prabandhams are accepted as being on a par with the, the Sanskrit Vedas. Otherwise, the, the phrase Ubhaya Vedanta will not even be in use today. Okay? And also, uh, in terms of service to Tamil, he composed Desika Prabandhams. And these Desika Prabandhams, they are incredible in a lot of different ways. They are spiritual, so that's one beautiful aspect of it. And there's the philosophical as well. For example, Swami Deshikan has, uh, has written several pr Prabandhams which expand on the meaning of, for example, the Charama Slokam, or the Dvaya Mantram, or Tirumantram, etc. So, so in that sense, they are very philosophical as well. Some of these Prabandhams are very philosophical. And then they have a lot of literary value as well. What I mean by that is that even if you were an atheist, and if you read Swami Deshikan's poetry, you will still be impressed by the beauty of that poetry. I just wanted to give you an example. So I told you that this uh, Meivaratha Manmiyam, that, that Prabhantam called Meivaratha Manmiyam, it's about the glory of this Kshetram called Kanchiburam, which is also known as Meivaratha Kshetram. And remember I said that Brahma is, was trying to do a Yagam. He invited Saraswati to come and accompany him. He sent his son, uh, Vasishtar, uh, to, to, to bring her, but she, she refused. And, uh, and then she came in the form of this Vegavati river. Now, so you have to imagine this, when Saraswati Devi is coming in the form of this Vegavati river, uh, in fact, even the river name itself indicates the anger, Vegavati comes tremendously fast. Okay, so, so the anger of Saraswati, so there's one pasuram in this Meivaratha Manmiyam, which is about the anger of Saraswati Devi when she comes in the form of this Vegavati river. I'm not going to go through the meaning of this, of this pasuram, but when I read that, when I chant that pasram, I want you to see how it sounds. The sound itself conveys the anger of Saraswati Devi. Okay, so you will see that. Okay. Anna vadi vaalasa yamanna nadayalu yarumanna varaseri varu vaal. I'm just reading here. Anna vadi vaalasa yamanna nadayalu yarumanna varaseri varu vaal. Atta na yanatta na yanutti da na yatti da na utti vuri vaal. நன்னடைவிடா <laughs> See, you see the, 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 the cadence, the meter that he has used, itself conveys the anger of Saraswati Devi, right? So for example, the, the parts that, that talk specifically about her anger, about how angry she is, she flowed mercilessly bringing devastation in her wake. Hills on the way, no problem. So, so, so she climbed, just climbed them. The, the Vegavati River just climbed them and then came down those hills. So the, the hills were not, not a problem at all. She, was, she had no problem with the hills. She would just climb them up and she would come down the other side. Flat lands, not flat lands. She would roll the stones, she would push the stones. She was flowing at the speed of the Vayu Bhagavan. So even the, the for example, the st stones rolled, etc. But even the, the hills and mountains, they just crumbled and flattened. That's what it says. 
கட்ட விட இற்று விழ முற்று விழி உற்றடைய விட்டருகிற it's very beautiful it tells you how angry the saraswati devi was when she flowed as the vegavati river and finally of course swam emperman curved her achudan that is emperman as an anai as a dam anai tanivil adisai vara tagaya atru aniginar tagaya atru tanudaiya vegam vegathai irandu avar aniginar so when she saw that emperman was lying as an anai as a dam in her way she slowed down because she cannot she knows that she cannot get past him so also look at the beauty of this uh, the, the, the pun on the words attanaya attanaya he says it's almost as if he's using the same word twice attanayan attanayan but these are even though they are exactly the same words they have different meanings here attanayan ayan means brahma attan means lord so lord brahma he sent his uh, son as, as a uh, as a messenger to saraswati devi so attanayan that son of his he sent right so you see this attanayan and this attanayan mean completely different things and yet they are exactly the same words attanayan that is it's very beautiful it tells you how much mastery swami deshikan has over the tamil language so it's not just sanskrit where he had a command of the language as i have already told you when we were going through uh, the, the sanskrit stotrams of swami deshikan for example on daya shatakam and the, the knights moves etc he told you how uh, how much command he had over sanskrit but you will find that his command over tamil is no smaller than his command over sanskrit and so there's one other uh, pasram that i want to give as an example of how beautiful his uh, pasrams are so when he talks about uh, the attigiri perar perarulan arising from the homagundam it's almost like gattiyam he's do, he's doing is a pasram which is almost like announcing the arrival and you know in the olden days when kings traveled on the back of an elephant somebody would you know herald the arrival of the king he would say or you know if you have read punni and selvam the periya paruvetrayar 64 vilpungal petra periya paruvetrayar varirar parak parak etc so here is that pasuram that talks of that heralds the arrival of uh, emperman the the avirbhavam of emperman from the home gundam of the the ashtamedha yagam that brahma was doing attigiri arulada attigiri arulada perumal vandar avanai vari perin mel alagar vandar look at the way every line ends with vandar vandar it adds to the beauty right it uh, announcing the arrival of uh, of a great king in this case the king of the whole universe attigiri arulada perumal vandar avanai vari perin mel alagar vandar அச்சிதனில் கண் கொடுக்கும் பெருமாள் வந்தார் கருத வரம் தரும் தெய்வ பெருமாள் வந்தார் அத்திகரி அருளாள பெருமாள் வந்தார் ஆனை பறி பேரின் மேல் அழகந்தார் கச்சிதனில் கண் கொடுக்கும் பெருமாள் வந்தார் தர் ஸ்டோரி அபவுட் சம் ஒன் ரிசீவ் ரிசீவிங் இஸ் ஐ சைட் பை த கிரேஸ் ஆஃப் திஸ் பெருமாள் என் பெருமான் சோ தட் இஸ் அப்பர் டு ஹியர் karuda varam tarum deiva permal vanda so whatever varams you are thinking of he is going to give you that that deiva permal vanda mukti malai poli mugil vannar vanda you see he reigns what does he reign he reigns moksham apparently so he is not only a karnakaran but what he reigns is moksham mukti malai poli mugil vannar vanda moolam ena olamida vallar vanda aadi moolame endru gajendra olamida vallar vanda so this the, strong one this came uttara vedik pulle udithar vanda so the one who arose from the homagundam he he came umbar dolum kadaludeyar vanda thane the one who is worshiped by nitya suris he came so etc so it's very beautiful okay i'll stop with one one last uh, uh, slokam here adakala patu is sharanagati to kanchi perar lalan and swami deshikan had a very tremendous liking for Uh, kanchi perar lalan for example he has written varadraja uh, panchashat for example and he even named his son after varadraja perumal so varadraja perumal so his name was given to his son as well so the swami had a special liking for him and in vairagya panchagam the very last slokam is is very small one and but it's very beautiful by the way this this slokam that i'm going to refer to here this last slokam of vairagya panchagam 
This Vairagya Panchakam, this slokam is often sometimes recited after that Nyasa Vimshati number 22, the last slokam of Nyasa Vimshati. That is sometimes people when they chant Nyasa Dashakam, they will chant the Nyasa Dashakam and then chant the last slokam of Nyasa Vimshati and then this last slokam of Vairagya Panchakam. So here what Swami does is he gives an account. This is almost like declaring all the wealth that he has. Now you would think that for someone who wrote Sri Stuti, Sri Stuti in praise of uh, the, the uh, Thayar and, and caused a rain of gold coins. So you would think that his bank balance would be considerable, right? So let's see how much money he has, right? So, so he says here, uh, so he, he talks about Nasti Pitrajitam Kinshet. The wealth earned by my father, it's not even a little. Nasty kinship. Kinship na kunjum, nasty naka kunjum goda illai, pitra jitam, yang appa sambadi chirundi, kunjum goda illai. Say, yung appa kitin illai, but at least me, Sri Stutilan, Sulit Kere, Mok and Raya Gold Coins Lanka Chitna, the Lani. Of course, he let that, uh, that year uh, Brahmachari take all those gold coins. So he says here, Namaya Kinchit Arjitam. Na Sambal Chadungoda Undumela. And that earned by me is also a nice. So, so you see, he talks about how much he has earned and, and how much his father has earned. Now, then the next line, he's, he's going to say something about that, that would seem like he's talking about his grandfather. But again, but this is the, the cleverness of Swami Deshikan, using a word that suggests grandfather is actually referring to Brahma. So he's here, astime, astime, hasti shailagve, vastu paitam aham dhanam. So I say, I've already said that I don't have any wealth coming from my father or myself, but I do have something, asti, yes, I do have something, yanaki rikirade, hasti shailagre, hasti giri, hasti shaila means hasti giri, I do have something, but I do have a vastu. And what is that vastu? And that vastu is, is my grandfather as well. He says, Pitamaha. See, Pitamaha means grandfather, but really Pitamaha also means Brahma. So he says here on the top of this uh, Astigiri, there is the wealth that was earned by Brahma. What is that wealth earned by Brahma? Of course, well, what Brahma earned by doing that Ashramedha Yagam? Which is of course the Kanji Pera Rolan who did uh, who did arise out of that Homakunda. He's the Sutta that I have, Swami Deshi can say. It's a very beautiful uh, slogan because it tells you how, how little he cares about the material wealth of this world. Okay. It's very beautiful. Nasti Pitrajitam Kinchit, Namaya Kinchidarchitam, Astime Hasti Shailagre, Vastu Paitamaham Dhanam. Okay. Okay, and uh, they, this is a Tamil counterpart of Nyasa Dashakam, but there are some new concepts, so we will learn those. And we will, uh, so we will continue with this next week, okay? So, Kavita Kesim Hai, Kalyana Guru Shalini, Srimate Venkateshaya, Vedanta Guru Namaha. Thank you very much for your patience.